Uh, well, did everybody have a good Christmas? Oh, we had a great Christmas. Um, and, and this morning, just to give you a little heads up, we're going to do things a little bit differently this morning. It's going to be good, but y'all won't be bored to death with me speaking the entire time. Uh, we'll mix it up a little bit. Some of, uh, some of our uh, some friends of mine and one is the love of my life uh, is going to share this morning. Uh, but we had a great Christmas. Um, everybody get like Christmas gifts you really wanted? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Some of y'all did. Some of y'all did. Some of our Christmas gifts did not arrive on time. And they still haven't arrived. Like I ordered them. It, when you order stuff from China, it's that way, I think. Um, but you know, one thing I love to do when I order something is I track it, right? I, I track it every single day. And so I've been tracking this bulk of gifts that were like a lot of our Christmas gifts every single day since I ordered them. Uh, down to Christmas Eve, I'm, I'm, I'm checking uh, before I went to sleep, maybe they came, maybe they came just, and, and the reason I enjoy tracking things and, 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 and keeping updated is because I love hope. Amen. Like I love it. I love hope. And so while our gifts have not yet arrived, they will eventually arrive. Amen. They're going to get here eventually. And it's going to be perfect timing because Christmas is over, but not at our house. As soon as those gifts come in, she's angel said, we're wrapping them. I was trying to one, one did actually finally come in. She's, I was going to give it to him, just like, here it is. She's like, no, let's make it special. I was like, okay, she doesn't talk like that at all, but apparently I do. But you know, I love hope. I love the concept of hope. It's what keeps me going. You know, hope is, is, is uh, the thing that keeps us going. It's that fuel that we need to persevere in our lives. Amen? You know, there's two words that um, uh, were on my heart this morning to really share or that I've been really thinking about for the past few weeks uh, with, with thoughts of this day is, is, um, is, is hope and breakthrough. You know, hope and breakthrough. Like I said, hope is that thing that we need to, to persevere. It fuels us. It keeps us going. You know, you're hoping for better days, hoping for more. And the second word is breakthrough. You know, hoping for breakthrough. I know that's something that I desire all the time is just another breakthrough. You have that breakthrough, there's another breakthrough. Amen? Like there's always more. And that's the God we serve, that our best days are ahead of us. And we're like, well, yesterday was pretty dang good. Yeah, but he's got more in store for you. That means he has more breakthrough. Well, I had a breakthrough back in, in 2000. It changed my life. Well, if that was the last breakthrough, you're missing out because he has more and more breakthroughs for every single one of us. Galatians 6, 9 says, so let's not get tired of doing what is good. This is one of my favorite scriptures. If this scripture didn't exist, I would have quit a long time ago. I need this scripture. Galatians 6, 9. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. I love when I have a little bit of responsibility in the situation, right? If I don't give up. So who wants a harvest? Like in your life, who wants a harvest? Amen. I mean, you and I, we want that harvest. Yeah. Who wants to like reap the blessings that God has for you in your life? Show of hands. I was using both hands, so I couldn't instruct you to raise your hand. I didn't want to raise my phone. But at just the right time. It says just the right time. And I started thinking about that. Like, what does that mean at just the right time? Uh, so while studying, I, I came across a third word. So we're talking about hope. We're talking about uh, breakthrough. And I, had a, I found a third word. Third word is suddenly, suddenly. And, then, and I, was, I was studying. And so y'all know who Saul is, Saul and Paul. Uh, Saul, later renamed Paul. Uh, Paul in Acts uh, chapter nine, verse one, it says Paul was eager to kill the Lord's followers. Like, could you imagine like, like I'm eager to go eat lunch right now. Like, I've been hungry since I woke. I'm eager to find out where we're going to go eat. Like, I'm looking forward to it. I'm pumped about it. Now that's all I can think about right now is where I'm going to eat lunch. Paul was eager to kill Christians. He was passionate about killing Christians. That's the kind of guy Paul was. And then in Acts 9.3, it says, As he, Paul, or Saul, Paul, was approaching Damascus on this mission, the mission to kill people just like us, he's on mission, a light uh, from heaven suddenly shone down around him. Suddenly. He fell to the ground, heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? So right then he has this encounter with Jesus and, and he not only starts following Jesus passionately, 
But his whole mission becomes going to spread the word about Jesus, to go and convert people, to, to convert people to the very people he was trying to kill. Like it was his life's mission. And he gets thrown in prison for it. Acts 6, uh, 16, 25 says, around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. So they're locked up. Uh, they're not supposed to be in jail. They're, they're un, un, unjustly put in prison. Uh, so his prisoners are listening to them singing. And then suddenly there was a massive earthquake and the prison was shaken to its foundations. All the doors immediately flew open and the chains of every prisoner fell off. So Paul suddenly encounters Christ and becomes a Christian. He gets locked up and then suddenly God shows up and does the impossible, you know, gets him out. You know, and I love how Paul was as committed and passionate about following Jesus as he was, or maybe more than he was about persecuting Christians. I mean, how many of us, if we were as passionate about following Jesus as we were before we found Jesus, we would be unstoppable, amen? amen. We would be a force to be reckoned with, passionate. So he ends up in that unfair situation, but Paul keeps all of his hope, all of his trust in the Lord. And at just the right time, suddenly he experiences the breakthrough he had hoped for. Chains fell off, walks out of the prison, free. And there was no hope that he was gonna be set free, but suddenly the Lord showed up. So I started thinking about that. And like, what does that mean for us? What does that mean for me? What does that mean in my life? You know, we all have a prison. And we all get uh, ourselves into situations or unfair circumstances. So I don't know what prison is for you. Maybe it's a marriage struggle. You know, maybe your prison is, is loneliness. Like I'm just, I'm just tortured by loneliness. Or, or maybe it's debt. You're in a prison of debt or, or depression or, or addiction or, or, or feeling not good enough or, or just a low self-confidence. Like what is prison for you? Comparing yourself to others. Uh, maybe just feeling like you've, I've just never been good enough or I just can't get it right. I'm a failure to launch. I'm a, I, I mess up. I just, I can't seem to get myself together. I'm the black sheep of my family. What is your prison? And I'm telling y'all, we serve a God that can turn it around immediately. All of a sudden, suddenly can turn it all around even when it feels like all hope is lost. You know, so I started thinking about, you know, beginning this new year, 2024. You know, I, I'm just believing, because uh, I, I am an optimist. Sometimes I'm an optimist and it causes a little bit of problems. Um, am I out of time? Shoot, Angel told me I, I thought it was going to make two minutes. Oh, I'm going to wrap it up. I was about to buy some time. Just kidding. Sidetrack me. I'm going to do that to y'all. I'm going to sidetrack y'all too. I'm going to take my shirt off while Angel's preaching. <laughs> but I believe 2024 is going to be a great year. A year, a hopeful year. Because look, my hope is in Jesus. Amen? Is your hope in Jesus? And if your hope is in Jesus, that means breakthrough is in, in the future. I don't know what you've been believing for, but I believe that God is going to bring breakthrough, breakthrough that you desperately need in your life hope, breakthrough. I don't even see it. There's no glimmer of light. I don't even see it happen. I don't see it how it could happen. I'm, I'm up to my neck. I don't see how it's going to happen. Suddenly the Lord will show up and turn everything around for you and your prison and he will change everything. He will bring hope and breakthrough to your situation. And that's what I'm believe, believing for your 2024, my 2024, our church's 2024. I'm believing that God's going to turn it around. Amen. So let me pray and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, yeah, come on. That's a clap for me wrapping it up. I'm going to pray and then I'm going to invite uh, Jason Ryder uh, up. So let me pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you so much for this day, Lord, this opportunity just to have a chill Sunday in your house, just to let you have your way. Father, I pray for everyone's 2024, Lord, that you would have breakthrough on the horizon, Lord. But Lord, I, just like that scripture says, if you don't give up, that you would put that personal obligation to serve you in all of our hearts, Lord, to be dedicated to you and passionate about serving you like never before, and that all of our hope and our trust would be in you and you alone for the breakthrough that we all hope for and desire. Lord, and I pray that suddenly you bring it, and it would only be through you. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. 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 Uh, well, hey, look, I, I, we wanted uh, Jason Ryder to come share also. Uh, Jason is a dear friend of mine. You know, a few years ago, I think it was in year one of the church, I started noticing how valuable uh, long-standing friendships were. And I, I remember being intentional about reaching out to Jason. Jason's been a longtime friend of mine and angels stood in our wedding, sang in our wedding. And uh, he's one of those people that you can just count on, right? He's solid, he's steady, and, and he's a man of integrity. And he's, he's one of my, my best friends. And so I want y'all to give it up for my boy, Jason Ryder. I got to be honest this morning, I thought it was going to be a panel. <laughs> so my, mentally, I'm not prepared to be standing up here in front of everybody. But, um, you know, I was sitting down there and um, I, I got a few notes I'm going to share with you this morning to speak into your new year about opportunity and things like that. But as I was sitting down there, I just felt like the Holy Spirit gave me the word valuable and you're valuable. Somebody in this room, that's a word for you for this year. You're valuable. Uh, God has a plan for you. Uh, your life is a, has a purpose. Um, so just remember that. You're not here by accident. God has a purpose for you. So, you know, I'm going to speak to you 2024 this morning about, you know, God is our source. And I just wrote down a few notes. Um, and every day, um, you know, everybody pretty much has an iPhone. Uh, I put in my, my notes for a reminder that every day at 6 a.m., I'm a creature of habit, wake up at 5, drink coffee, that, that, and then start work. But every day at 6 a.m., uh, this reminder goes off on my phone, and it says, I will not trust in riches, but in him who richly provides. Wow. You know, God wants to bless us, and he wants us to have an abundant life, not just financially, but emotionally, um, spiritually, in our relationships. And I believe most of the time, that blessing comes in the form of opportunity. Um, I think it's Matthew 6, 26. It says, uh, look at the birds. They don't store food in barns, but God provides for them. And when I thought about that, um, God doesn't physically bring the worm to the bird. The bird has to go out and earn it. The opportunity's there. You know, God doesn't physically build the nest for the bird. The bird has to go find the twigs, bring it back, and build it. God gave him the opportunity. And so, um, you know, this morning, the same thing goes for a life. Um, you have opportunity in your life. You have things, each of our lives are different. You have things in your life that is an opportunity that's just for you. And God wants to bless you with that opportunity. And, and the reason he's giving you that opportunity is so you can go and bless others. Um, and when you work for an opportunity and you get blessed by God, it makes you appreciate that more. You know, it makes you appreciate that I worked for that, I earned that, and it'll make you, therefore, be a better steward of that. You know, um, in, I think it was in the 70s, uh, they had this experiment where they, um, they built this perfect atmosphere. And it was like 72 degrees, and they, they planted all these plants, and they watered them, and they had this garden, and everything was going to be perfect. It was a perfect environment. And after a couple of years, the trees wouldn't grow. They wouldn't produce fruit. And so the scientists started trying to figure it out what was going on, what was all this about. And they came to find out that in this dome, there was no wind. So therefore, the wind didn't push against the trees. So when the trees didn't have any resistance, their roots wouldn't grow deeper. And when the roots wouldn't grow deeper, the tree wouldn't grow. Therefore, the tree wouldn't produce more fruit. So in our life, I just wanted to give you this word this morning. Um, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're dealing with, um, any setbacks is just a setup for God to do something great in your life. You know what I'm saying? And I believe that um, God's going to use your setbacks for you to have an opportunity to do something better in your life. I know every setback that I've had in my life, it's propelled me to something better. You know, every time that I th thought something didn't go my way, God was planting my roots and making my roots grow bigger and deeper and stronger. That way, one day I could be an oak or a bigger tree to give fruit for somebody else. 
And that's just what God wants to do. He wants to refresh us so he, we can refresh others. So I want to speak over to you 2024 that keep your eyes open, keep your ears open for opportunities. You know, keep your hearts open for opportunities that, you know, God wants to bless you with. And you can use that opportunity to there, therefore bless someone else. Amen? Amen. And I saved two minutes, so I'm going to give that to Josh because he's got a lot better stories than me. <laughs> Father, we thank you for this morning. Father, we thank you that, God, you bless us, and you bless us in the form of opportunities. And I just pray for that each person in this room, you give them a specific uh, vision for 2024. God, you just give them uh, many opportunities in 2024 that they can, they can work, and they can, and they can be blessed, and they can use that blessing to bless others and refresh others. And God, I'm just so thankful for Purpose Church. Father, I pray that you continue to bless this church, bless the people of this church because they are valuable to you. They have meaning, Father. And God, we just thank you this morning that 2024 is going to be a great year. We're believing it in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. Come on, great job. Um, also, I failed to mention Jason Ryder is one of our, our board members as a church. So if I ever do anything stupid, he gets to call the shots. Um, I'm going to try to find a bunch of hobbits to be the rest of the board, though. A little bunch of short people because he, he makes me look like a little person. Um, great job, Jason. Thank you so much. That was good. Um, okay, so next up we have our beloved. Everybody, everybody loves Josh Martin. Everybody loves him. He's just... Uh, lovable guy, but he's our uh, associate pastor and worship pastor, obviously, as you saw today. Uh, but Jason, is, I mean, Jason, let's get back to Jason. You know, that's enough about Josh. Let's get back to Jason. Um, no, but Josh is, he's a ride or die in my life. He's a man of wisdom, of character. And so I really wanted him to be a part of speaking into all of our 2024. So y'all give it up for our loved Josh Martin. Whoa. Let me get a whoa, what the business. All right, sweet. For those of you who don't know, my name is Josh. Um, I have the honor and privilege of serving here at Purpose Church. Let's please give it up for our amazing pastors, Pastor Chad and Angel. And let's give it up for Purpose Church because I say this time in and time out that this is a real church. This is a real place. This is a place that's not just about what happens in here, but it's about what happens beyond here. And uh, that's one of the many reasons why I love this place so much. But I've been charged with the topic of dreams. Yeah, dude. All the kids say yay. Dreams. You can't really talk about dreams without talking about vision. As a worship leader, I'll quote one of the greatest worship leaders and songwriters of our generation, Mr. Chris Tomlin. Chris Tomlin says that it is not his job as a worship leader, as a performer, as a musician, as an artist, and as a songwriter. It is not his responsibility to make you sing, but it's his responsibility to help you see. So let me put it like this. When we see better, we'll gather in places like this and we'll sing better. And when we sing better, the prayer, the hope, the goal is that we go out and we live better. Because Romans 12 describes our worship as life not as music. That's why I love this house so much because the vision on this house is what God has for real people in their real life. Dreams. Dreams are actually one of the most defining, if not the most defining factor of my faith journey. My mom is actually the one who taught me how to dream. My mom used to show me Kobe Bryant videos where he was rapping 
and playing basketball. She was like, you can do both. <laughs> my mom told me how to dream. I gave my life to Jesus when I was 13 years old at a youth retreat. Changed my life forever. I found myself in a youth group. By this point, I'm living up all the dreams. I'm hooping, I'm playing basketball, I'm dunking on people. I'm a traveling like singer and performer. I'm living all my dreams. And I go to this youth group for the first time. And a youth group leader pulls me to the side, I'm guessing, because I'm new. And she proceeds to ask me, oddly enough, Josh, what are your dreams? Interesting question from a youth leader. So I rattle them off. I'm like, I'm trying to be an NBA player. I'm trying to be a Disney Channel star, holla at me. <clears throat> and I wanted to sing and dance and perform, be a recording artist. She looks at me and she goes, well, those dreams, Josh, aren't particularly Christian. I was like, oh, it jarred me. It took me back. I remember going home that night and turning on one of my favorite songs that I actually used to perform all the time. And I convinced myself that God told me to give up all those dreams. But God, the path that that led me on led me right to the dream that I didn't even know I had, which is this. You're looking at it. Look at the person next to you. This is my dream. A part of it at least. And today I would define myself if anyone were to ask me was one word to describe yourself. I would say I'm a dreamer. I want to read a scripture for you. Isaiah 43:19. It says, "Be alert, be present. I'm about to do something brand new. It's bursting out. Don't you see it? There it is. I'm making a road through the desert, rivers through the bad lands. Wild animals will say thank you. The coyotes and the buzzards, because I provided water in the desert, rivers through the sun-baked earth, drinking water, for the people I chose, the people I made especially for myself, a people custom made to praise me. I'm over my time. I'll say this. If someone were to ask me, what do I see? I see a world and it's about to be a weird word to use. I see a world, a real world, dominated by the faith. Not just by religion, not just by tradition, not just by convention, convention but by faith. Where every fast food restaurant tastes like Chick-fil-A. And 
And every song has the spirit, even if it's talking about real life or love or heartbreak, has the spirit of God where people can grieve, but not like those who don't have hope. I see a world where the last are first. And if you feel like the tail, that you know you're the head. That if you feel beneath, to know you're above. That's my dream. And I hope it's yours too. Amen. Come on, Josh Martin, everybody. Come on, that was good. Are y'all uh, are y'all enjoying this? Is this okay? It's good because there's no backup plan. This is what we're doing. Um, well, look, one uh, one more of us are going to share my beautiful bride, Angel, who is the love of my life. Hey, come on, baby. I know you can't stay away from me long. Um, but I uh, really uh, wanted Angel to come up and share and. Um, and uh, yeah, I just love my wife so much and appreciate her. You are the best person that I know. Incredible. Y'all give it up for Angel. All right. It's been a good morning. That was pretty good. The last time he did an intro for me was the last time. It was, it was crazy. We won't talk about it. This has been amazing. I wish I had gone first now. Y'all were just so, so good. So anyways, an honor to share and just be in the house of God as always. And I don't know if anyone in the room is like me, but I love a new year. Like I just love starting a new year. I love the idea of a fresh start. It's a new beginning. It's a new chapter. I envision that God meets us at the new year with fresh mercy. There's fresh compassion. There's fresh grace on our new year. And I just love that. Anybody else with me? Amen. I've seen the proof for my life that year after year, when I start the year pursuing Jesus with everything that I have, that he shows up, that he shows up and then he meets us with his love. He meets us with his grace. He meets us with compassion. He shows up and opens the door to a brand new, incredible chapter of life. Amen. So how do we begin 2024 well? Or how do we like step out of one year and into another? Like if you really think about it, it's pretty weird. Like it's a weird feeling as we're worshiping. I'm just worshiping thinking like we're just standing right on the edge of like everything that's happened this year, all the good, all the bad, all the ugly, and we're about to step in to something fresh, to something new. And how do we do that well? So I really believe that we do it well through prayer and fasting. So that's what I want to just share on just for a few minutes this morning, or five to be exact. I'll try. <laughs> um, but every year as a church, as Chad said earlier, we begin the year with 21 days of prayer and fasting. And tomorrow is the first day of the year. And so it begins. We begin our season of prayer and fasting from the first through the 21st. And I can just say that every year, it's, it's a declaration that God has first place in our hearts. It's just a way of saying and expressing, God, you have first place in our hearts, in our lives, in our church. And in 2024, we want God to have first in everything. Amen? Y'all with me? But I want to just encourage each one of us as we start this season of prayer and fasting to be a part, to jump in with us. And maybe you're thinking like, well, I don't know, like I've never done that. I've never fasted before. I've never been a part of something like this before. I would just say that this is your year. This is your year to start the new year in a way that you've never done it before to start the year just expecting that God is going to move in your life, that he has new and amazing things for you in this coming year. Amen? I love this. I love this time of year. So then I look, I didn't look forward to it probably year one that we do it, did this, but now year seven, it's one of my favorite things that we do as a church, one of my favorite things to be a part of. I would never want to start the year any other way 
than this. And I've learned that over, and some of you will be with me on this, for me, over the past 22 years of serving Jesus, I've learned that any time that we make a decision that I'm just going to go all in with God on this, that's never something we're going to step back and be like, I really regret that moment of going all in, right? We never regret those moments because God is always consistently moving in our lives, It's never just a one-time thing. Like he doesn't just restore us one time or heal us one time or, or save us. Like he continues to work over and over again. And I really believe that in the beginning of my walk, I thought it was all one time. Like God healed me, he saved me, he restored me. But over and over again, I desperately need him over the years, every year to show up, heal me again, God. Help me through this again, God. I need you again. And so when we decide to go all in with him, he just shows up again and again because he has more. He has more for your life. He has more for your story. He has more for you. Amen. Do y'all believe it this morning? So I have a few questions that I just wrote down. If you're taking notes or just kind of processing through the start of the new year, I wrote this down. What's the more that God has for you this year? Like what doors does God want to open for you in 2024? What dreams will you begin to walk in? What prayers have you been praying that this is the year that he wants to fulfill those dreams? What purpose will you discover that you didn't even know it was on your life? What miracle will you be a part of? Like all of this hope awaits us. And we don't want to exclude ourselves. I don't want anyone in the room to exclude themselves from the more that God has for you. I love this scripture. It's Ephesians 3.20. It says, now to him who is able to do immeasurably more. Come on, y'all shout it with me. More. That was kind of weak. Thought it would be. <laughs> there we go. God is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. Amen. So one of my favorite questions, I love this question. I even started seeing it kind of circulating around already, but what are you leaving in 2023 and what are you going to take with you into 2024? I think that's a question for all of us to think through and process. And I really believe that the greatest way we will leave the things that need to stay back in 2023 is through a season of prayer and fasting. If you're like me, there's some things that I am keeping back in 2023. There's some moments that need to stay back. There's some pain. There's some hardships. There's some discouragement that need to stay in 2023 so that we can reach forward for all that God has in this new year. I believe for you, there's things that need to stay back in 2023 so that you can grab a hold of the new things that God has for you. Amen? Amen. So I'm going to give you, I'm out of time. How did this happen? (laughs) Am I good? Okay. Um, So I want to encourage each of us, like over the next three weeks, Let's just spend some time seeking God with everything we have through prayer, but also disconnecting from the world through fasting. So I'm going to just run through real quick. There's all different ways that you can fast. I'm going to just name a few just to give you some ideas. Now, it could be for some of you, this is like hardcore, a complete fast where you just set aside all food and over 21 days, three weeks, you're just like water and juice. That's hardcore. Make sure that you're okay, your body is okay for that. The next type is a selective fast, and this is super common. This is where you might decide, you know what, for the next three weeks, I can do this. I can eliminate certain foods from my diet right? Maybe I'm going to cut the sweets. I'm going to cut the breads. I'm going to cut the soft drinks, just kind of along those lines. The next type of fast that you might want to think through and consider is a partial fast. That's where you might fast certain meals during the day. Like I'm just not going to do lunch every day so that I can spend more time with God. Like during lunch, I'm going to spend time seeking God during that time. And then the last that I'm going to mention 
Doesn't have anything to do with food. It's a soul fast. This is so good, and I believe it's so good paired with any of the others as well. This is eliminating maybe just certain things that are coming into our minds or distracting us over the next three weeks. Like, you know what? I'm just going to cut social media or Netflix or TV or just something like that and just get my mind right. Because I believe that over the next three weeks, God wants to help each one of us to refocus, to realign, and to re-surrender to him. He wants to help us to refocus on him. What's his heart and his will for our lives? What does he want us to surrender or re-surrender again? Like what things or what circumstances in our lives do we just need to give it all to Jesus? So I really believe that what God desires to do in your life in 2024 will be the best ever, that it's gonna be incredible, amen? So I'm so out of time. But I have a quick little story. Is that okay? Or you want to go straight to communion? And then we're going to do communion. Are you sure? Okay. So quick little story. I'll wrap it up here. So a couple days before Christmas, we took all the Dinkle clan to see Elf on the big screen. Are there any Elf fans in the room? Yeah. Great movie. So we go see it on the big screen. So that's seven adults. Josh is never going to let me live this down. I see it already. I don't care. (laughs) So we take seven kids, eight adults. We take up an entire row in the theater. And I can just tell you, our kids were the most excited, but also the most obnoxious in the theater. We were that family. I think people probably asked for their money back when it was over. We laughed louder than anybody else in the theater except for Chad because he got a nap. He took him a little, got him some sleep (laughs) during that. But the kids quoted almost every line in the movie as loud as they possibly could. Like they needed everyone in the theater to know that they knew the lines to this movie, right? But I really started thinking about in that theater at that moment, I started thinking about how when we love a movie, we watch it over and over again, right? Anybody else? Maybe you can think of your favorite movie or favorite Christmas movie, right? And then the more you watch it, the more you know it, the more you love it, right? We start to like, see it a little bit differently. We start to see new things. We start to hear new things. We start to make connections that we didn't make before. Things start to hit us just a little bit differently. We may even start to recite some of the lines. And then before you know it, you're quoting your favorite lines to your favorite movie at just the right time and in just the right situation. Amen. Is anybody tracking with me a little bit here? The greatest thing that I really believe, as I just prayed about this, prayed for our church, that I believe God wants to do in your life and in our church is to change our lives through the word of God. Psalm 119 says, my earthly life clings to the dust. Revive and refresh me according to your word. God desires for his word to revive your life and to refresh your life. And if you're like me, I'm like, I need him to revive and refresh me through his word. Because the more we read it, the more we'll know it, the more we'll love it. We'll start to hear new things, start to hear his voice. We'll start to hear his direction and his will for our lives. We'll start to think like him. We'll start to see his perspective and not ours. We'll start to see heavenly things. He'll start to give us his wisdom. He'll start to change our lives more and more through his word. Verses will start to impact us like they never have before. They'll start to change our lives. And then before long, what's gonna happen? We'll start to quote scriptures at just the right time and in just the right situation. Amen? So what will God speak to you this year? He's got specific words, verses, direction, wisdom, perspective that will change everything for you. Amen? If you don't believe it, I believe it for you. 
He wants to do something in your life this year that is life-changing. Amen? Amen? Let me pray over you, and then we're going to move into communion, y'all. And we're going to worship together one last time this year. Father, I just thank you so much, God. I thank you for the way that you love this church. God, you are crazy about every single person that walked in these doors, that's sitting in these seats. God, you see them, you know them, you're for them, you know their story, God, you know the things they're carrying, God, you know the things that they need to leave behind in 2023. God, I pray that as we uh, have communion together, God, and as we close and worship, God, that we would surrender everything to you, God. Help us to move into 2024 only with the things you want us to carry in, God. I pray a blessing and I pray favor over our church, over every person, every child, every family in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Team, y'all can come on up. And then if everybody wants to go ahead and get your communion ready, and you can stand with us, and we'll close in um, communion and worship. Okay. Y'all can go ahead. Um, so we're going to take communion as a church family. And something I always think about and always kind of say, like, I know that we've all experienced communion a little bit differently. Like we're, we come from different backgrounds, we come from different churches, but I want you to know that you're invited to take communion with us as a church family this morning, that communion was really just set in motion by Jesus. And we're gonna read some scriptures together and just allow the word of God to lead us this morning. So you can go ahead and open up that first layer and we're gonna pray over the bread. And then we'll take that and have the scripture right here. Yeah, and you know, this is a this is a holy moment. You know, when we take communion, you wanna take that bread? There you go. Uh, when you when we take communion, it's a holy moment. You know, Jesus said, Hey, whenever you eat or drink, do this in remembrance of me. Um, in Matthew 26, 26, it says, As they were eating, they took some of the bread and blessed it. And then he broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples saying, take this and eat it for this is my body. And so, you know, his body, his body was broken for us. It paid the price for all of our sin. It made a way where there was no way. You know, I talk about hope and breakthrough, like this is the suddenly that happened and, and it made the way. And so anytime, um, you know, you're discouraged or whenever you're like, like um, just yeah, down and, and you're eating your meal, you're like, whoa, I serve a God that gave it all for me and not to take it for granted. So I want you to take that, that bread in your hand, the, the wafer, and, and uh, just hold it up. We're going to pray over it and just ask God to bless it. And we're going to take the bread in, in remembrance of what he did for us, the price that he paid for us. So uh, let's pray. Father, we love you so much. And I thank you for um, your body that was broken. It was broken for me. It was broken for all of us because we've all fallen short, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, that you made a way where there was no way, Father. You paid the price so we wouldn't have to, Lord. And we thank you, Lord. And we take this bread in remembrance of that price that was paid, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. You can take the bread. Amen. You can open that next layer. If we read Matthew 26 and verses 27 and 28, it says, And he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. He gave it to them and said, Each of you drink from it, for this is my blood, which confirms the covenant between God and his people. It is poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. There's just nothing like the blood of Jesus. Like there's just nothing like what that represents and signifies and means to us. It cleanses all our sins. It says in Isaiah, it makes us white as snow. It just purifies us and cleanses us. I pray every single day, God, just cover me with the blood of Jesus. We're just so desperate for his covering, for his grace, for his mercy. And so we're just gonna pray over 
um, the juice, the wine, <laughs> and, um, and just believe that God's covering you. As, you. as you walk out of this year and walk into a new year, the blood of Jesus is covering you. Father, we just thank you so much. God, for all you've done, God. We can't even know or remember all the ways that you have been good. The goodness of God runs so deep in our lives, and we are so thankful. We just stand in this moment, God, just right almost to a new year, to a new chapter, God, and we just stop. We stop our lives, we stop our minds, we stop the distractions, and we just look at you. God, thank you. Thank you for every single thing that you've done for us. Thank you for all the things in 2023, God, that the blood of Jesus just covered, God. You've given us grace over and over and mercy, God, and compassion. God, and I just pray over this blood, God, over the, over the juice, Jesus, that you would just cover each of us and help us to never forget what this represents. God, that it represents our salvation, God. It represents purity, God. It represents that you washed us, that you gave us another chance. And I pray that you cover us all in the blood of Jesus. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Well, look, we love y'all so much and um, just believe in big things for 2024. Uh, can we give it up for everyone that shared? Except for me. This isn't for me. It's for y'all. Just kidding. Um, well, look, we're going to worship one more time, like Angel said, one more time, 2023. And uh, yeah, let's just praise him. Amen.